Hello and welcome back to Total Organic Chemistry. This video, I will be talking about the Jones oxidation. So as with other videos in this named reaction series of mine, what I will first do is discuss a very brief history of the reaction, its mechanism and scope, the pros and cons, and finally an example of the reaction used in the chemical literature. The Jones oxidation's namesake is Sir Ewart Jones from the University of Manchester, and he'd published this reaction right around 1950. The Jones oxidation is using chromium-6 compounds to oxidize primary and secondary alcohols to carboxylic acids and ketones, respectively. Let's look at the overall equation for the reaction. So we can take an alcohol here, a general alcohol, with R and R prime groups. We'll talk about if those R and R prime groups are hydrogen or carbon, but for now let's just leave them as R. And we're treating this with either chromium trioxide or also a dichromate salt like potassium dichromate or sodium dichromate. And that's our most interesting reagent, but we also have to have some aqueous sulfuric acid here. And acetone is very commonly used as a general solvent for the reaction. The chromium trioxide or dichromate in aqueous sulfuric acid is a lot of times called Jones reagent. And what that gives us is the alcohol oxidized to the ketone here. So we'll have the, again, the R and R prime groups, but we'll have a carbonyl group instead of a carbon oxygen single bond. In addition to our organic product, we will also get a chromium-3 salt. So it could be a variety of things, but I will just write chromium-3 sulfate right here as our inorganic product. Let's take a look at the mechanism for the Jones oxidation. So we'll start with either chromium trioxide here, CrO3, or maybe the dichromate salt, so Cr2O7 is going to be our dichromate anion. These compounds are orange or red-orange in color, and treating this with sulfuric acid, H2SO4, gives us sort of the active chromium compound in the oxidation, which is chromic acid here. So with a chromium center in the plus six oxidation state, and with a very, very similar structure to a sulfuric acid itself, if you notice that. And in your reaction vessel, the chromic acid and alcohol are in equilibrium with what we call a chromate ester, which is this compound, where we have the R and R prime groups again from the alcohol, and the oxygen here but now the oxygen is also bonded to that chromium from the chromic acid. Then what can happen is we can have a molecule of water here from the aqueous sulfuric acid, and we do have a hydrogen on this central carbon, and because this chromate ester contains a very good leaving group, we can perform an E2-like mechanism where the nucleophilic oxygen will come pull off the hydrogen here, and that bond will swing up, to form a double bond to oxygen. This bond will swing up to the chromium, and then the double bond to oxygen will swing up to the oxygen to give us a negative charge on that oxygen. So what that gives us after the elimination is the carbonyl product. So in this case, a ketone with our R and R prime groups, plus this sort of ill-defined chromium-4 product. I can write that as CrO2OH minus, and I'll just write that in quotation marks because, like I said, it's ill defined. It's probably not stoichiometrically like that in solution. But what happens after this initial oxidation is this chromium 4 product reacts with another molecule of chromic acid, so of the chromium 6 chromic acid, to give another chromium 5 compound. And this chromium 5 compound can act as another oxidizer for the alcohol. So like I said, the stoichiometry of that is rather ill-defined, but what we eventually get is this chromium-3 salt that I talked about earlier. And in this case, we can just write chromium-3 sulfate. And chromium-3 compounds have a very characteristic dark green color, which is very convenient because we can tell when the reaction has reached completion by the disappearance of that red-orange chromium-6 compound and the appearance of a green chromium-3 salt. So that is the formation of our ketone, where both R and R' prime are carbon atoms, 
But what if one of those substituents is a hydrogen? So what that means is we have a primary alcohol instead of a secondary alcohol, and the reaction mechanism will be slightly different. From this first oxidation that I just went through, we will end up with the aldehyde. So all of that is the same. We'll end up with this carbon-oxygen double bond. And the aldehyde and water are actually in equilibrium with this hydrate molecule, where we have two OH groups and no carbon-oxygen double bonds. So this intermediate is stable enough to react with another molecule of chromic acid, the H2CrO4 that we formed, to again form another chromate ester like this, where we have the OCr bond, as well as another OH group on that carbon. So just like before, we'll have another molecule of water come in, pull off that hydrogen, forming the double bond to oxygen and kicking off the chromium-4 compound to actually give a carboxylic acid instead of the aldehyde. It's very difficult to stop the Jones oxidation at the aldehyde stage before it overoxidizes to the carboxylic acid, so that is something to keep in mind. I'd like to quickly talk about some of the pros and cons of the Jones oxidation. So first of all, we have very cheap reagents. Chromium trioxide and other dichromate compounds are very cheap and readily available as well as obviously sulfuric acid and acetone. We also get very high yields from the reaction. So these chromium-6 oxidations proceed very cleanly and without any real problems usually. Like I said, this reaction is also very pretty. We start with a red-orange chromium-6 compound and it slowly changes to a dark green chromium-3 salt. So whenever we get a very noticeable color change in a reaction, that's always pretty fun. However, there are a few important disadvantages of the Jones oxidation. First, and very prominently, chromium-6 compounds are carcinogenic to humans, which means that this oxidation is rather dangerous to carry out, and we'd like to avoid using these toxic reagents as much as possible. Another thing, like we just talked about, is that it's very difficult to stop these oxidations at the aldehyde stage, and we usually get an over-oxidation to the carboxylic acid. So whereas sometimes that's helpful, sometimes you want to get to the carboxylic acid, if you'd like to oxidize a primary alcohol to an aldehyde, you'd be better off using a different oxidation. Finally, because of the use of sulfuric acid in our reaction, this just won't be compatible with a lot of more complex molecules. So molecules that are sensitive to acid won't perform very well under these Jones oxidation conditions. So the presence of acid-sensitive functional groups in your molecule might necessitate a different oxidation reaction to use. Finally, I'd like to show you an example of the Jones oxidation in the chemical literature so that you can see how this reaction is actually used in the field of organic synthesis. We'll look at the total synthesis of epibatidine by the Armstrong group that was published in 2007. So epibatidine is a very toxic compound produced by certain species of poison dart frogs. The toxicity of this compound precludes its medicinal uses, but certain analogs of this structure have been shown to be very potent painkillers. At one point in the synthesis, the group ends up with this bicyclic compound, where we have an aldehyde group on the ring here. And they treated that aldehyde with very simple Jones reagent conditions, with chromium trioxide in aqueous sulfuric acid and acetone, just like we discussed, to actually oxidize this aldehyde to the carboxylic acid. So this carboxylic acid was later functionalized into a different functional group, but this is an interesting application of the overoxidation potential of the Jones oxidation and how the Armstrong group used that in their total synthesis. So I hope this video helped you understand the Jones oxidation and the scope of the reaction a little bit better. If you like this video or learn something about organic chemistry, please like and subscribe to my channel. Like my page on Facebook at Total Organic Chemistry and take a look at my website on the screen. If you're willing and able, consider donating to my Patreon page, which really helps me to continue creating these content for all of you. Thanks for watching.